Hello all! Happy Bionicle Day, and welcome to the Knowledge Tower, where we investigate the science behind the Bionicle legend. Of all the characters within Bionicle, I don't think there is any who demonstrate as clear an affinity for science than Nuju. As a former scholar of the Kometru Knowledge Towers, Nuju often used his keen insight and analytical skills to aid the rest of the Toometru during their many adventures. Perhaps one of the most impressive moments when his scientific knowledge came into play was during the events of Bionicle Adventure 6, Maze of Shadows, when the Toa Metru faced off against the formidable Rahi Nui. This chimera-like creature was already daunting enough from its physical traits alone, with the head of a Kane Ra, the body of a Muaka, the stinger tail of a Nui Jaga, the wings of a Nui Rama, and the punching arms of a Tarakava. However, during its encounter with the Metru, it also possessed all eight standard Kanoka powers and was able to feed off of elemental energy, making it completely immune to the Toa's elemental attacks. Of particular note here was the fact that the elemental energy the Rahi Nui consumed seemed to fuel its Kanoka powers, with it using the energy in this fight to make use of the growth Kanoka power to get taller and taller as the battle raged on. While this was happening, Nuju examines the footprints left by the Rahi Nui and notices that while it is definitely growing larger, the impressions it leaves suggest that its overall mass was remaining constant. This was the key observation that allowed Fakama and Nuju to work together to defeat the Rahi Nui. How much of an object's mass is packed into a certain volume is known as the object's density, which in our world is measured in kilograms per meter cubed. Nuju knew that if something was getting larger in size, and therefore also in volume, but not in mass, then that mass had to be more thinly spread across its new volume. It would have a lower density. To put it in mathematical terms, the density of an object can be found by dividing its mass by its volume. By increasing the denominator of this equation, the resulting density is also lowered. Nuju also knew that due to the relationship between increasing size and increasing volume, that this change in density could be exploited very quickly. To show how this would work, let's say we have a cube with sides of 1 meter each. This means that it had a volume of 1 meter cubed, as the volume of a cube is just the multiplication of its length, width and depth, in this case all 1 meter. Let's also say that it had a mass of 1 kilogram, meaning it has a density of 1 kilogram per meter cubed. If we double the dimensions of the cube to give it sides of 2 meters, then you might think its volume would also double, but that is not actually the case. Instead, its volume is now 2 by 2 by 2, meaning it has increased to 8 meters cubed. If we increase the sides to 3 meters, then its volume goes up to 27 meters cubed. As you can see, the volume of an object increases far quicker with increasing size than any particular dimension like height. Nuju and Fakama were able to exploit these facts to their benefit, feeding their elemental powers into the Rahi Nui and causing it to grow larger and larger, spreading its fixed mass over a rapidly increasing volume. The Rahi Nui became less and less dense, eventually getting less dense than even the air around it, leaving its attacks completely harmless as its molecules quickly drifted apart. The book, of course, describes this in a classic dramatic fashion, with the Rahi Nui growing to half the colossal height of the Metru Nui Colosseum before it was finally defeated through this method. And it is this part of the story that we are going to investigate today. Ignoring the magic of exactly how the growth Kanoka power works, for this video anyway, we are instead going to find out just how successful the Toa were in their defeat of the Rahi Nui. If it really were to grow to such a height, just how low of a density would the Rahi Nui end up with? Did the Toa really need to feed its growth power to such a high degree, or was this just a massive overkill on their part? Let's find out. Although, before we get into that, I do have to say, the way Nuju's observation is described in the book doesn't actually make all that much sense. He observes that the footprints from before the Rahi Nui's growth spurt and the ones made after it are identical, concluding that this means that its mass was staying the same despite the growth. This never really made much sense to me, as if something was growing larger but kept the same mass, then what he actually observed should have been larger but shallower footprints, not identical footprints. 
This is because the feet of the Rahi Nui would have gotten bigger, but if it had the same mass, then its weight would have been distributed over that wider area, thereby not sinking as far into the ground as before, and leaving those larger but shallower footprints. But to be fair, the fault of that particular misunderstanding is entirely with Greg Farshti as the writer, rather than with Nuju. Anyway, with that grievance out of the way, on with the investigation. First off, we need to know the relative heights of both the Rahinui and the Colosseum, so that we know how much the Rahinui grew by during this fight. Thankfully, as anyone who saw last year's Bionicle Day edition of the Knowledge Tower will know, we have already calculated the height of one of these elements. The height of the main Colosseum building was determined within that video to be 4.5 kilometers, meaning that at half this height, the Rahi Nui grew to a gigantic 2.25 kilometers. For you kaiju fans, that's roughly 7.5 times taller than the tallest version of Godzilla, who topped out at 300 meters. As for the original height of the Rahi Nui, that is a little trickier. Ordinarily with this sort of thing, I'd simply measure the height of the set and then use the set to story conversion factors I've determined in the past to find its true height. However, the Rahi Nui doesn't actually have a set. Luckily, it's made up of an amalgamation of Rahi that did get sets, meaning that I could just measure those instead, with the Muaka and Kane Ra being the constituent Rahi that would influence its height. Not so luckily, that is a set that I don't actually own, but that's where my fellow Bionicle fans come in. After putting out a public call for help, Tumblr user Koropu came to my rescue and provided this very detailed breakdown of the Muaka and Kanera dimensions. Thanks again Koropu for your help on this one. As Koropu noted when providing this information, the Muaka is slightly taller than the Kanera, so the Rahinui would likely have a height somewhere between the two given its Muaka body and Kanera head. So I decided to take the average of these two heights for the height of the theoretical Rahinui set. 13.95 centimeters. The constituent sets of the Rahi Nui were all released in 2001, and so we need to use the 2001 to 2003 set scale to convert this into the in-story height. Canonically, a Toa is 2.19 meters tall, while a standard Toa Mata set is 16 centimeters tall. 16 centimeters is 13.6875 times smaller than 2.19 meters, which means that in order to do any set story conversions in this set scale, we need to use that as our conversion factor. Applying this to our Rahi Nui height gives it a true in-story size of around 1.91 meters. Given our final growth size of 2.25 kilometers from earlier, that means that the Rahi Nui's height grew by a factor of a massive 1,178 times during this fight. But, like we demonstrated before, what we really need to know to answer this question is the factor by which the volume changed. To work that out, we can use this equation, which some of you may recognize from my previous Mass of Atoa video. This equation does include the original volume here, which is actually very hard to calculate without being able to get your hands on the actual set due to its complex shape. However, luckily for us, we don't actually need to know it. What we really care about is this last section of the equation here, which tells us the factor by which the original volume increases to get that final volume. Plugging our original height into L1 and our final height into L2, we find that the new volume of the Rahi Nui at the end of the battle would be a staggering 1,636,260,833 times larger than what it originally had. Remember, due to the fact that density is a measure of the amount of mass packed into a given volume, this means that if our mass stays the same but our volume increases, the density will go down as a result. And in this case, with a volume increase of over 1 billion times, that means our density is going to go down by that same massive amount. If we assume that the Rahi Nui had the same average density as a Toa, which was determined to be around 2,340 kilograms per meter cubed in the aforementioned Mass of a Toa video, then the new density at the end of its all-you-can-eat buffet of elemental powers would be a mere 143 hundred millionths of a kilogram per cubic meter. That is around 903,852 times lighter than air. 
If the Rahinui could still somehow magically direct its phantom limbs to attack the Toa Metru at this point, then its density would be more than low enough to give it the ghostly qualities described in the book. In fact, running those equations backwards with the goal of making the final density of the Rahinui to be the same as that of air, the Toa would only need to push the Rahinui to a new height of a mere 24 metres to render its attacks as harmless as a breeze. Instead, they made it 93 times larger than this. Hey, I guess if a job's worth doing, it's worth overdoing, right? Well, that's it from me for this Bionicle Day. I hope you all enjoy the rest of Bionicle Day 2025, and will join me again soon for another Bionicle Science investigation here at the Knowledge Tower.